Hello everyone, I am Kunraja Shah and today I will be presenting our work, PSP in Indian WhatsApp Groups. This is a joint work with Vinnie Matthew, Hiran Garimala and English Mukherjee. In the recent years, there has been an increase in hate crimes against Muslims. And while hate crime is itself a complex phenomenon, we cannot deny the role of social media. Either. Different reports have found that social media platforms like WhatsApp are becoming breeding ground of hatred, some of which again uh, converts to offline violence, as is shown in the recent communal riots, where a WhatsApp group was charged with promoting enmity on religion ground. WhatsApp in India has around 200, 500 million users, and they, these users use WhatsApp for diet communication as well as group communication. A recent study also found that one in six users are part of some political WhatsApp groups also. Our data set is also uh, a collection of different political WhatsApp groups. And we initially planned to study hate speech in WhatsApp, but we did not find any hate speech directly using a set of lexicons. We speculate that this might be due to three reasons. One is that laws against hate speech in India is quite strict. Political groups, which are this public WhatsApp groups, have to maintain a public image. And finally, we only have a access to a subset of public groups. A large part of this conversation or hatred conversation will be taking place in private groups but there is no way to access it. Instead, we found a particular type of message known as fear speech. This term was coined in a recent inter-group conflict research and defined as an expression to uh, aimed at instilling fear of a target group. Forms of this message include, but are not limited to harmful things of the past, traditions of the uh, particular target group portrayed as harmful, threat about the target group that they will dominate in the future. This is a typical example of a fear speech. And we to compare with hate speech, we also show an example of that. As you may notice, fear speech is very uh, non-toxic in nature, whereas hate speech directly contains different elements of toxicity and hatred. We, to further establish this idea, we passed the hate and fear speech data set, where the hate speech data set was uh, found from a recent uh, paper and found that toxic uh, toxicity was highly varied between hate and fear speech, with hate speech around 0.6 toxicity, where fear speech was around 0.4 toxicity. Further, fear and non-fear speech toxicity was very close, which uh, highlights that how, how challenging that this task is and how important detection of such new nuanced category of problematic speech might be necessary. We divide this presentation into five parts. The first part is the data collection part then the annotation part, then we characterize the messages and conduct a survey to understand the users better. Finally, we end with uh, the detection of fear speech. Data collection from WhatsApp is very challenging because uh, there is no API for WhatsApp, but is it, it is a end-to-end -end encrypted platform. In our case, we use a particular method developed by one of the past work where they use a particular chat.wordstam.com plus query as a query to search in Google, Facebook, and Twitter. This query contains uh, keywords from a keyword list, which covers all major political parties and politicians. In total, we cover 5,000 political groups. Uh, varying in language and different political parties and religious groups, containing image, videos, and text. Our data collection span from, uh, from August 2018 to August 2019, which is uh, more or less about one year. 
Before analyzing the data set further, we planned to detect language of the data set and found that Hindi and English were the most prominent one with 70% of the total messages. We also removed spam messages using a high precision lexicon. And uh, the, the table on the right shows the final statistics where we see 1.4 million messages in 5,000 groups and average length of the message is around 89 words, which is quite high comparable, comparing with the similar message in Twitter. In order to sample data for annotation, we first need to create seed lexicons, which can help in sampling the data set. For this, we first create a seed lexicon using uh, words denoting Muslims from ourselves. Then we train a WhatWork model based on ngram features from this uh, data set and uh, use this WhatWork model to sample 30 similar words. Among these 30, whichever words are relevant, we add it to the seed lexicon and then uh, continue this process again. The annotation of fear speech was uh, is pretty challenging. And since, since this was the first time it was getting introduced as a uh, data set task, we provided details definition of fear speech and also a flowchart to identify fear and non-fear speech. We also provided with forms of fear speech and each form also contained different examples. A post was master fear speech even if it contains some fear element in it. Then we started the annotation of the data set. The initial annotation was done by two expert page students. These, these were around 500 posts. After this annotation, we asked uh, students to voluntarily pass, participate for the annotation, and seven students joined in overall. These seven students are further compensated after the task was completed. Training of the annotators was done in two rounds of 40 posts each. The main annotation was done on Brokan Annotation Platform, which is an open source platform for annotation. And the students were provided with uh, a secure account. Batch size was initially kept around 100 posts and finally increased to 500 posts as the student becomes more and more proficient. Regular breaks and uh, analysis were planned for this uh, for helping the annotators. We reach uh, an under agreement of 0.36 using place cup per score. This can be considered fair agreement, and this is also comparable to past hate speech research. We annotated around 1,000 uh, fear speech and 3,600 non-fear speech. And after this, after annotating them, we also search for duplicates. These duplicates might might be forwarded message or messages from the same source, but uh, edited a bit. In total, we found around 8,000 messages for fear speech and 19,000 for non-fear speech. One of the challenges of this data set was the length of the message. As you can see, there are like average length of message in fear speech is around 500, and uh, average length of message in non fear speech is around 464. Some of the non fear speech messages also contain quotes from Quran, which was in Urdu language, which further uh, complicated the task of annotation. Next, we move to characterization of the messages. We found that fear speech was shared more, was uh, spread to a large number of users and large number of groups, and had a longer lifetime. Emojis were one of the important parts of these messages. And we built a co-occurrence network based on emoji uh, window. And using this co-occurrence network, we then ran Lubin algorithm, which is used to find communities and networks. And we found this four prominent communities. First is related to Hindutva symbols, where different symbols like triangular flag, trident are shown. Second is related to Muslim plus demons. Third is related to weapons, which are finally uh, symbols of terrorist attacks or riots by Muslims. We also use LDA topic modeling to extract topics and select 10 topics. And we show here three topics, 
uh, first is love jihad which is a conspiracy theory uh, about against the uh, interfaith marriages between hindu and muslims increase in muslim population where they claim muslim population is increasing at an alarming rate finally they also blame muslim for past communal riots at places like kerala next we conduct a survey to understand the users associated with such groups which spread fear speech to conduct surveys we we use custom audience targeting feature provided by facebook and we target users based on list of phone numbers three types of users are selected one who is posting fear speech directly these are around 3000 in number users present in groups sharing fear speech these are around 9500 in number users present in groups not sharing fear speech these are also around 9500 in number around 50% of the users had an active facebook account the survey design was uh, short and with no monetary benefit hence we expected low turnout we used a generic template to avoid priming there are three types of users and two types of statements and these statements can be seen in the right the reason behind using this statement instead of the whole fear speech is that fear speech in its raw form can be very polarizing in total we have around eight statements four from fear speech and four from non fear speech and with each statement we ask the participants about their belief and propensity to share such content we found that users in use who are posting fear speech and who are present in this fear speech groups have uh, more likely to believe in fear speech as seen in this graph similarly users who are posting fear speech and present in this fear speech groups are also more likely to share fear speech as seen in this graph the the effect fear speech is having on the users present in the fear speech is very alarming and is a point of concern for the whole platform as a whole finally end with automatic creation of fear speech where we train a cluster of different detection models and found that transformers are performing the best with a uc roc of 0.83 but uh, unfortunately the, none of the models are precise enough to deploy them at large scale with transformers model the best variant reaching around 0.51 we finally end with some suggestions that the platform or ngos can take to counter this situation first of all this analysis on on a subset of whatsapp groups and we believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg whatsapp is an end to end encrypted platform and the content moderation is left to the users hence educating the users is one of the important steps one possible solution might be client side classifier but the accuracy and size of the model are still not at par discussion about how to moderate the subtle and indirect message is another point for the policy makers as this type of speech is quite different from the traditional hate speech hence new and moderation policies and better moderation mechanisms are required uh, for this task in conclusion we Uh, operationalize the definition of fear speech and create a f- the first data set about fear speech in india particularly for this whatsapp groups the timeline of the data set are also co-located with the 2019 elections which makes this more important we identify topics and emojis which indicate the different ways to verify muslims we see that state of the art detection model fails to classify uh, fear speech with high precision hence uh, more effective methods are needed our survey further identifies anti muslim attitudes of the users present in this fear speech groups and also present a novel strategy to do so data set and code are available here thank you and you can contact us on twitter or directly on mail please join the question asking session for uh, further discussion on this paper